be afraid. I bring good news of great joy for you and all people. Tonight, your Savior was born in David's town. He is Christ, the Lord. You will find him wrapped in swaddle cloth and lying in a manger. Near the beginning of this year was my first introduction into the genre of analog horror. Since my first encounter with the grandfather of all analog horror, Local 58, tons of other channels have come to try and replicate the success of the original. Nowadays we have channels such as Gemini Home Entertainment, Alex Kansas, and even smaller channels like Eventide Media Center or Channel 7. All of these are fantastic introductions into the genre, but none of them have had as big of an impact on the analog horror community as the Mandela Catalog. The Mandela Catalog's first video dates back to June 9th of 2021, and since that day, five more videos have came out, totaling six on the channel. With only six videos in five months under its belt, the Mandela Catalog has exploded in popularity, blowing up to over 200,000 subscribers seemingly overnight, and, well, it's for good reason. Just listen to me when I say that I was on the edge of my seat for most of this series. Whether it was during the POV shots where the camera switches around the home, or the eerie footsteps of something coming towards the camera, only to be jump scared by this horrific looking thing. The Mandela Catalog does a fantastic job of building up suspense and capturing your attention. But not only is it great for scares, it also has a very compelling story to tell. Now, if you haven't watched the Mandela Catalog, I highly recommend watching it before this video so that you will have the entire picture in your head. But if you choose to be lazy, I will be giving a brief recap of each episode in a few moments. At first, the Mandela Catalog appears to be your run-of-the-mill analog horror channel. But after watching a few of the videos, you will quickly realize just what a compelling story is being told throughout the series. The Mandela Catalog tells the story of how Lucifer tricked Mary and Joseph into bringing him into our reality. With the world now believing he is Jesus Christ, and each video on the channel showcasing how Satan's takeover is affecting everyone in Mandela County. From missing children, to people committing suicide, to even straight up coming face to face with these creatures. These videos go to great lengths to showcase just how evil a world like this would be. And keep in mind, this story is still in its infancy stage. The channel only has 6 videos and plans on releasing more in the near future. So while we will have to wait for the rest of the plot, we will be covering the story that we know as of today. Before we dive straight into the timeline of the Mandela Catalog, here is a brief rundown of the 6 videos on the channel as of right now. I'm going over these in the order that they were uploaded, but keep in mind, the actual watch order that's been suggested by the creator is a little bit different than how I'm going to be explaining them today. The first video that was uploaded on the channel is titled Overthrown, and in its most basic form, showcases the nativity scene that is ripped directly from a channel known as the Beginner's Bible. We are treated to a normal looking Bible cartoon with God talking to these two men but the video quickly turns into an analog horror video, glitching out, showing Mary talking to the angel Gabriel, but only this time his face is glitched out and blurred, and then we are shown a figure of God distorted, talking to Joseph and then talking directly to the camera, turning from a normal figure into, well, whatever this thing is. The video then ends with red and white text, with the red text talking about how some entity out there deceived them, and the white text talking of how they are bound by chains to forever walk the sands of the earth. This video was followed by the Think Principle. This video explains that there are now these creatures called alternates taking over Mandela County. The video was meant to be an informational video broadcasted to the many residents in Mandela County and details how you should arm yourself, your home, and showcases an acronym known as THINK, which stands for Tell an authority figure about your encounter, hinder the alternate's movement, identify the class type, neutralize the alternate, and then the video takes a weird turn with the K representing kill yourself because there's not enough room for the two of us. Then the video switches back to normal with the K being replaced by know your place in reality. We are then shown three different subclasses or types of alternates that you can encounter. There are doppelgangers which take on the identical appearance of any human, Detectables, which are basically the same as doppelgangers, only they have much more distorted faces. 
And then the last category, which isn't even named, but I'm going to be calling the unspecified. These unspecified are the same as the first two, only they are completely unrecognizable from being human with completely black faces, or in some cases, no face at all. The video then ends with an unspecified being shown after a light switch is flicked on. The third video is the Mandela Catalog Volume 1, which is honestly the only one that you should really watch as it's the one that kept me on my toes the most. This one starts off by completely replaying the entire Think Principle video, only this time it cuts out the Type 2 alternate and also the part at the end with the creepy figure. The rest of this video tells the story of three people, Mark, Caesar, and Caesar's mom. We see a phone call take place between these two people named Mark and Caesar. Caesar basically tells Mark that his mom fell and he is now taking her to the hospital. Because he won't be home for a long time, he asks Mark to go to his house and turn on his security cameras which magically turned off after the mom fell. Mark reluctantly makes his way to Caesar's home, citing, you know how I feel about your house. At which point, Caesar's face distorts into this creepy thing, and then we cut to Mark driving over to his house. Mark goes to his home, we get some creepy shots of the hallway, and then we get this message, and suddenly we hear the mom getting attacked by some unknown entity. All the while, Caesar's face distorts yet again into these two creepy eyeballs. We then cut to Mark in his room where we are informed that an alternate has followed him home. After being stuck in his room for a few days with the alternate outside of the room teasing him with this audio, we finally hear Mark get into an altercation with this creature where Mark ends up committing suicide. You fucking bastard! The creature's footsteps can be heard running towards the camera and then he finally jump scares the audience. Mark's dead body is then shown on screen with the text that reads, Nobody came for me. We are then shown a full training video for the Mandela County Police Department. This video basically tells us how dispatchers that handle calls for 911 should not send help for any caller reporting an encounter with an alternate, no matter how frantic their screams are. They also suggest not speaking too much as it might accidentally reveal your fear. The video ends with a toddler stress assessment video in which various audio clips are played. We are then shown a story that Mark wrote when he was 4 years old about a man that hid in this dark scary room by the stairs. Mark even gives us a sketch of this dark hooded man that is supposedly hiding in his room. Then Mark explains how he saw this man in the corner of a room and the story ends with him saying that he fell asleep, the end. The video then cuts off with four pictures being shown, with the last two showing the stairs of presumably his creepy home, and then finally this weird hooded figure. Moving on to the next video which is Intruder Alert. This one talks about a new alternate creature that we can call intruders. These intruders utilize television and technology to steal your children. We are even shown a situation in which a mom hangs herself after realizing her baby has been stolen. The video shows an emergency alert system detailing how over 3,000 children have gone missing in various counties near Mandela County. We are then shown some scenes of the home that presumably this suicide took place in. The journalist for the story leaves after taking this photo because of the so-called overwhelming sense of dread, with the police officers on the scene also being too scared to even go near the room where the suicide took place. So scared to the point that they just set up cameras that take pictures every 5 minutes instead of just going in and inspecting the room themselves. As we switch between the pictures every few seconds, you slowly see the threat level change and this mysterious figure pop its head out. The climax in this video is this photo that shows a censored box claiming that some invisible force has tampered with the victim's corpse. The video then ends with the police stating that they have no intention of releasing evidence to the public. Video 5 is the shortest one on the channel and is called Metaphysical Awareness Disorder. 
otherwise known as MAD. This video details how these alternates are somehow making people kill themselves just by speaking to them directly. Relating back of course to the Think Principle video and how the alternates use psychological warfare to subdue their victims. The video then ends explaining that in order to avoid this mad disease, you must at all costs avoid any type of religious practices and also avoid any unnecessary beliefs in philosophical thoughts. It then ends with this chilling message, telling you not to open your eyes when you believe an alternate is in your room because it might be inches away from your face. The last video on the channel is called Exhibition. Now you will see later that this one ties a lot of the main ideas together. The video starts with a phone dial being played with some eerie music softly playing in the background. Then we are shown Noah from the story of Noah's Ark outside, when all of a sudden we hear this knocking sound as he looks up. A small detail here I noticed is that there is a faint text that reads, Type 2 Detectable in the background of this scene. Suddenly this clip of Noah cuts off, and then we see a shot of this random church with these two random kids in front of it, and are then shown footage that is being used as evidence in this legal case titled, Heathcliff versus the Unknown. Heathcliff, of course, referring to Mark Heathcliff, who we know died in an earlier video. The footage we are shown is presumably taken from the night that Mark shot himself, and we see him make his way throughout his home when all of a sudden we see an intruder come onto his TV. After this footage is done playing, we are then shown clips from the story of Noah's Ark, with Noah turning around to see this figure, which is eerily similar to this one in the first video. The figure tells Noah that his attempts to escape his grasp will be futile, and that he will put something on Noah's Ark that will eliminate Noah. The video then ends with the United States Department of Temporal Phenomena putting out a PSA detailing how you should call this phone number if any loved ones are affected by exposure to analog televisions or mirrors. And that's the brief recap of all the videos on the channel. We have alternates forcing people to commit suicide, ties to religion and Jesus Christ, and we also have these two unfortunate incidents in which two humans hung and shot themselves because of these unworldly creatures. Trying to tie all of this together has been a lot of fun, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. If you love mysteries like this and solving these almost ARG type of situations, then you will love the sponsor of today's video, Hunt a Killer. If you find yourself always getting caught up in these internet mysteries, then Hunt a Killer is perfect for you. Now a big misconception you might have about Hunt a Killer is that it's just about solving a murder. That could not be further from the truth. This game creates an ongoing narrative. You get to learn the backstories for each suspect, their complicated relationships to the victim, and get to watch the story unfold as you complete each box. If you'd rather play alone than with a group, then Hunt a Killer still has you covered as it's designed to be played solo or with an entire group of people. Albeit, you might have an easier time with more people, you can still enjoy the game no matter how big or small your detective group is. I recently was able to play through the first episode of their Mallory Rock season, and it was honestly such a blast. I played with around 3 people in my group, and it made for the perfect game night. Not only were we reading through journals, maps, and other items from the Hunt a Killer box, but we also had to dig through several websites, videos, and tons of pictures to uncover the mystery behind this episode. By the end of it, I was left just wanting more and couldn't wait for the next box to be sent to my house. So what are you waiting for? Right now you can go to huntakiller.com slash your everyday theorist or click the link in the description below and make sure to use code theorist for $10 off of your purchase. Do you have what it takes to solve the case? Thank you to Hunt a Killer for sponsoring today's video. So just to recap, the biggest detail that must be understood to get everything right is the idea behind the alternates. These alternates are creatures that rely on forcing you to kill yourself and then they seemingly take over your body for their own gain. We know this because there are several instances throughout the series where someone commits suicide and then their body is almost immediately preyed upon, such as in the case of Mark's death. Now one thing I feel everyone is debating on is whether or not alternates and intruders are one and the same. I personally think that they are two separate entities. I believe intruders are related to the main alternates, but they aren't exactly the same thing. 
I think these two creature types are working together to manifest themselves in the world of the Mandela catalog, but as for them being one and the same, I'm not so sure. The way that I've thought about it was them working together tag team style, meaning that the intruders are used as a gateway to instill fear into someone, with the alternates being the creatures that are able to latch onto that fear and then drive the person to commit suicide, ultimately with the alternates taking over that body. We see this happen later on down the line with Mark. From Mark's footage, we see that before the alternate was teasing him by calling his name behind the door, he actually had an altercation with an intruder first, with this black figure appearing on his TV, indicating that the intruder got him to be scared and fearful, which then made the alternate's job easy, being able to make its way into Mark's presence by feasting on his fear. They work together to bring humanity closer to hell on earth. So that's the main idea behind alternates and intruders that I will believe moving forward in this video. Feel free to debate me in the comments, I just wanted to bring up something different than what everyone else has said already. Now to understand how all of these events and videos tie together, I've tried my best to construct what I believe to be the true timeline behind the entire story as of today. The story of the Mandela Catalog takes place all the way back to the birth of Jesus Christ. When Christ came to be in the original timeline, everything was fine. He was born, rose, died for our sins, and well, you know the whole story. However, as shown in Overthrown, we see Mary talk to this glitched angel named Gabriel, which at one point delivers this message written in binary. The only way to see this message is if you put the captions on in the video. The message reads, I am the one true savior. I must reverse the delusion. Joseph is next. This is very important because we see in the very next scene, this distorted version of Jesus talking to Joseph, telling him that he will fool the shepherds and that he will know your greatest fear. These two events are no coincidence. What we are seeing here is Mary and Joseph being manipulated into birthing the Antichrist. Don't believe me? Well, this video is titled Overthrown, which can be meant as a double entendre, with the first meaning being a literal breakdown of the word, overthrown which roughly translates to the throne above, in which case is most likely referring to God's throne. Or the more likely explanation is the meaning of the word overthrown, which is to forcibly remove someone from power. In this case, Lucifer is removing Jesus from power by having Satan himself be the one that is born instead. Keep in mind that later in the video, we are treated to the red and white text. The red text here is the devil talking, expressing how easy it was for him to fool Joseph and Mary. And the white text isn't Jesus. I know a lot of people think that this white text is Jesus Christ talking, but I actually think that it's Mary. The reason I believe that it's Mary speaking here is because of the picture that is used. The picture we see here is taken from this website, with the picture being titled Model of Bethlehem by Night. And where was Jesus born? That's right, in Bethlehem. The reason I think this is Mary is because if you've just given birth to the Antichrist and then realize the mistake you've just made, You'd most likely go back to the place where it all started and then begin to wonder of what a terrible thing you've just done. The chains that bind this person's ankles is actually the unbearable guilt Mary believes she carries due to bringing such a monstrosity into the world. She roams the earth carrying this guilt and believes that her foolishness will be her legacy, citing at the end, if there is a god, please help me. This last line specifically makes a ton more sense if Mary is saving it instead of Jesus. The next event that takes place in the story is the story of Noah. We see Noah's story take place in exhibition. The original story of Noah as we know today goes as Noah being the last true believer in God, with him being told to build an ark to save himself and carry on with his life. However, in this new twisted version of Noah's story, Lucifer sees in Noah that he hasn't fully converted to this new Satan-ruled world. Noah somehow still retains his memories from when Jesus Christ was the creator and seeks to survive past the flood in order to carry on with his beliefs. This angers Satan and is why the devil says that he will put something onto the ship that will eliminate Noah. As to whether or not he succeeded in his plan is unknown, but I assume that we will get more information as new videos are released. Now before we move on, just the basic idea that I'm presenting here is that Lucifer overthrew God and is now poised to take over the earth. He is now taking over earth by releasing these alternates, intruders, and unspecified monsters onto humans. 
forcing them to commit suicide because suicide is well known to be a one-way ticket to hell. This is because in Christianity, suicide is considered a sin that is so bad that it hinders your ability to get into heaven if you should partake in such an activity. The main problem with this theory though is that Satan waits so long, waiting over a thousand plus years until the 1980s to execute this entire plan. Some people have speculated that Lucifer's takeover has a lot to do with the actual title of the series. With the series being called the Mandela Catalog, which is an obvious reference to the Mandela Effect. And for those unaware of what the Mandela Effect is, the Mandela Effect is a phenomenon in where people swear up and down that they remember something that never happened, with people believing that this proves the existence of parallel universes. One of the most famous examples is people believing that the Berenstain Bears were actually called the Berenstain Bears. Now how does this idea of the Mandela Effect tie into the Mandela Catalog? The idea here is that Satan somehow during the 1980s was able to change the course of history, rewriting it and making him the Messiah instead of Jesus. Now the rest of the story takes place during this transitional period in the 1980s. It's during this time that we see the videos Think Principle, Mandela Catalog Volume 1, and Parts of Exhibition take place. During the 1980s, the police have become more aware of the issues surrounding these new creatures. With the police force putting out videos, training officers and dispatchers on how to handle situations involving these so-called alternates. In the Think Principle, we see that during 1981, there was a broadcast to the county that told everyone how to handle any encounter with the alternates. This helps reassure us that police do in fact know about the existence of alternates. Fast forward to 1992, and we get the mysterious event that occurred between Mark and Caesar. Now the big twist in this story is that Caesar is obviously an alternate himself, with this being alluded to twice during the video, showing his face being distorted these two separate times. So the base story that people believe happened between Mark and Caesar is that Caesar somehow turned into an alternate before this phone call took place, and that Caesar's alternate is the entity that attacked the mom during this voice clip. Who are you? Get, get away from me! No! Again, this is slightly confirmed as we see Caesar's face distort heavily during this audio clip. Another reason for Caesar being the alternate is because of the way he tries to get Mark over to his house. We know for a fact that Mark is scared of dark hallways and rooms because of the story from when he was 4 years old. So it's not new information to Caesar that Mark is afraid of darkness. Mark even lets on during the phone conversation that he is afraid of Caesar's home. I'm just gonna switch him on and get out of there though. You know how I feel about your house. Caesar, knowing all of this, begins preying upon Mark's fear of the scary stairs from when he was four years old. This is true because right when Caesar says, One last thing, try to get a good view of That's when his face cuts to this troll type of face. Because he knows Mark is scared of the dark scary rooms, and truly believes that this hallway in his house will trip up Mark's fear of the room by the staircase and then allow an alternate to latch onto him. So, Mark goes over and sets up the cameras, but what Caesar hadn't accounted for is Mark not getting scared. Most people assume that Mark went to the dark hallway, got scared, and was then followed home by an alternate, but I don't believe this is the case. I think Mark came and turned the cameras on with no problem. The reason I believe this is because we see him drive home normally in the video exhibition. Now, Caesar, obviously feeling distraught over this, wants Mark to end up dead so that any alternate can take his place. This is why we see Mark encounter the intruder. The intruder manages to instill fear into Mark, and this is why Mark states that he has been followed home. He believes that this intruder inside of his television somehow followed him home. And we then see the aftermath of this altercation with the intruder, which is the footage of the alternate behind his door. On a side note, we know for a fact that this footage right here is from right before Mark's death because it is being used in the Mark Heathcliff legal case. And obviously, he isn't dead when he's filming this. Just after this altercation with the intruder, Mark begins hearing things from an alternate. This keeps Mark in his room for almost two days by looking at the dates on the recording, until Mark ultimately unalives himself. 
This brings us to what I believe is the last story on the entire timeline, and it's this lady that commits suicide over the loss of her child. Now, realistically, there isn't any given time that the story takes place in, so it could easily take place before or after Mark's death, but for the sake of this video, let's just say that it happens after. The police take note of the incident and make their way into the home, only to fear the evil energy within the place. We see in this video that there is an instance of an intruder manifesting himself. This happens during this part right here. Now remember how I said that the alternates and intruders are working together. Well, we know for a fact that this isn't an alternate, but we already established that intruders themselves cannot go inside the bodies. So what is taking over this lady's body? Well, there's actually a third type of creature that hasn't been revealed just yet. And I believe that the creature is going to be unbearably worse than the alternates and the intruders. Remember those dark scary figures during this scene in the bedroom and the hooded figure that Mark encounters? Well, I believe that these two hooded figures come from the same species that has remained widely unnamed. And in fact, this censored box is actually just this unnamed creature taking over this new body. That's why it's labeled as not an alternate because, well, these creatures' behaviors are just different. The creator of the Mandela catalog, Alex, has gone on record explaining that the hooded creature is going to be something far more sinister than the alternates and the intruders, so it's safe to assume that this part is definitely confirmed. As for whether or not this censored box is the new creature taking over the victim, well, that's just my speculation on the story. Now before we end this off, there was a few questions that I believe need some answers. Why are children being kidnapped and why does fear matter? Well, I think I've come up with quite a good explanation for this. In the video Intruder Alert, we get this message. They exist on different spectrums. At first, many would believe that this refers to the intruders themselves, but I think this actually refers to children. Children are seemingly able to physically interact with the alternates, even though adults don't have this ability. And I believe I know the reason why. This ties into the fear concept. Why do the alternates need adults to have fear in order to drive them mad? Well, children are pure souls from the moment that they are born, and because of their childlike nature, they are able to interact with the alternates. Now with children eventually growing up, the alternates needed a way to make adults become more childlike. Now what causes adults to act like children more than anything else? Fear. When you are jump scared, creeped out, or just fearful of your life, you act the most childlike out of any other emotion. This is why the alternates rely on fear. They need fear to cause your emotions to become more childlike, which will then cause you to be ready for the alternates to take over your mind. This is also why the intruders can seemingly touch and steal the kids. Imagine your childhood innocence as a meter. When you're a kid, your meter is full because, well, you're a kid, you're new. You haven't learned the harsh truth of reality and most likely haven't engaged in any hedonistic acts that would take your innocence away. However, as an adult, your meter slowly depletes almost completely dry by the time that you are grown up. You might have a little bit left, but it's definitely not a 100% like when you were a kid. What I'm implying here is that your innocence meter has to be completely full in order for the alternates to interact with you. When they scare you, your innocence and child meter goes up and up, but it can't reach 100. It can certainly come close to it, and the higher it goes, the more the alternates can psychologically harm you. This is why they seemingly rely on purely psychological tactics for adults, but are able to physically take your children away. At least, that's my little theory on it. I know it's a bit far-fetched, but I didn't want to simply regurgitate these same ideas for the entire video. I had to include something a little bit more fun just for my own sake. So that's the entire story behind the Mandela catalog as of right now. The story of how Satan replaced Jesus, causing a rippling Mandela effect to happen across history, affecting the lives of those in Mandela County, ultimately driving people to the brink of insanity, and in most cases, death. Will this be the end of the world as we know it, or will season two have something even crazier in store for us? I guess we will have to wait for the future of the Mandela catalog. If you made it to the end of today's video, congrats because I have a special announcement. If you are an iceberg and analog horror fan, then this is just for you. I just released some new merch on my store which can be found at yetmerch.com. I have 4 new pieces of apparel that are rocking my new iceberg volume 1 design. 
A quick shout out to Crazy Comet for actually coming up with that name as I was having trouble myself naming the design. If you want to help support the channel and rock this new design, go to y18merch.com right now and pick whatever is your favorite. Prices start as low as 20 bucks for a t-shirt with the most expensive thing being the hoodie which is $35. I tried my best to make these as affordable as possible. Thanks to everyone for the continued support on the channel. I know I haven't been the most consistent when it comes to uploads but I'm just one person trying my best to pump out as much content as I can handle. You all watching this right now are the ones that are making my dream a reality and I can't thank you guys enough. I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, or evening depending on when you watch this. And with all of that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.